Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is having a great day. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, and hopefully uh, you're everybody's still safe and healthy. So let's talk about the markets. Uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, please like, subscribe, uh, share, tell a friend. Uh, again, we try to uh, give you guys the, the, the most unbiased take day-to-day uh, -day of the markets uh, without... Uh, opinion or uh, you know any, any alternative motive this is just basically what the market is uh, and what the market gives us based on uh, technical analysis so I invite you guys uh, to all come aboard our uh, little journey here so let's talk about the tape so we've been talking about um, especially the Nasdaq it did, it did an incredibly great job for the last two weeks uh, negating headlines right especially in the banking system uh, have you seen now three four uh, banks have failed now in the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, you know, the latest one uh, has been something we you know we talked about even the weekend update. Uh, it's been failing since like 2007. It's been Credit Suisse. Uh, again, uh, over the weekend, there was some rumors that UBS was going to take some sort of marriage and basically in a shotgun wedding, uh, wiped out all of Credit Suisse's, uh, unfortunately, equity in the stock closed uh, in 90 cents, which is, uh, you know, not a great thing. Not in that a great thing at all. But uh, what this whole move is doing is two things. Number one, NASDAQ has been disconnecting now for two weeks. We know that's a good thing. Um, again, I think of all the crap that everybody uh, talks about, about the government and regulators and this thing, I, I really do believe that the regulators uh, and the government has done a great job to kind of containing this fire. You, you can say what you want, but uh, again, they didn't. They could have let this spread without, a, you know, without any type of action. But now it's just basically regulated to individual names uh, and yes, they're disasters with the Credit Suisses of the world and the SIVBs of the world and this FRC that just, you know, just, just looks like it's going to zero. I mean, the stock is down, uh, just, it's just, just, just destroyed, just absolutely destroyed. Retail is trying to balance it, trying to short it. Uh, both sides are getting hammered. Just to leave this damn thing alone. I mean, let it play out. Let it just go away. Uh, but you can see how the market has completely isolated uh, all these stocks with bad toxic news and just moving it forward. You know, so the news... Uh, that the banks were, you know, kind of hit and all that good stuff uh, two weeks ago. You know, now the banks negated this news, right? The big names like Goldman Sachs today, you know, rallied back. J.P. Morgan rallied back. Even names uh, in the insurance space that everything is tied into, like, you know, Met MetLife uh, rallied back. And when you look at the down today, uh, all the bad news that was hammering these financial stocks, just hammering the, the S&P and uh, the Dow Jones as, as a total, uh, we're rallying it today. You know, you look up today, you have the Dow up, you know, nearly 380 points, 1.2%. Uh, the S&P down a little, uh, excuse me, up a little bit, 1%. This is with all the banks, right? Keep this in mind. This is all the banks. Even last week, a lot of people were shocked, including myself, that you looked at the S&P 500 last week with all the, you know, dominating names uh, in the banking space. The S&P was up last week, right? And today we started with a one point, nearly 1% 1 gain. Uh, the NASDAQ today took a little bit of a backseat. Uh, you know, we saw a huge rotation, obviously, last week from everything into the technology space. A lot of people were talking about this was a potential uh, run up for uh, a potential rate cut. Again, I don't think that's going to happen uh, at the FLMC uh, on Wednesday, uh, but I do believe there's a strong possibility that they, they don't raise rates. Right. Again, that's a whole big different discussion. What's good for the goose might not be good for the gander. Uh, but, you know, we saw a lot, quite a bit of weakness today, uh, this morning uh, in the NASDAQ names and, you know, stocks that had the big runs, you know, the Microsofts of the world, the AMDs uh, of the world, the, the Amazons of the world that had really, really good runs last week. And the cool part about it is the bulls could have easily rolled over today, easily rolled, rolled over. But the cues, they held the bottom support here on the five-day moving average. You guys remember we were talking about it last uh, on the weekend video, potential pull into the five-day. That's exactly what we did. Uh, and to the bulls' credit, not only did they uh, negate, again, or just keep on engulfing these bad uh, bank headlines, you know, they held the five-day moving average, just like you see here. It held here once, twice, and today's the third time. And now we're looking back, you know, we're looking back for a potential uh, run up again tomorrow. And, and again, you, you got to give kudos. So you got to give kudos 
uh, to the Bulls. Um, I, I think when you look at the strongest space right now, anything to do uh, with the semiconductor space, like look for, look for example, you have AMD uh, that broke out, had a huge five-day run, back tested today to the five-day. If it starts getting above today's channels tomorrow, this thing has a chance to run. Uh, look at you know, NVIDIA, the same thing. NVIDIA had, and again, there wasn't a lot of uh, aggressive pivots today because everything was in the middle of the range uh, coming out of uh, coming out from last week, but names like NVIDIA did backtest the five-day. Names like uh, AMD and the Qs did backtest the five-day moving average, and the Bulls held serve. They held those areas and started backing, putting back into the close and put hammers on pretty much uh, everything across the board. And that basically sets up for tomorrow's uh, day. You know, look at you know, look at names, for example, uh, like AMAP, right? And the semiconductor space looks great, right? This thing is very close uh, to taking out the February 2nd highs. Look at Apple. Love Apple. Look at Apple. This is the highest close of the whole formation, closed right above the February uh, 3rd highs. Looks great. They were coming for the 160s. They were coming for the 162.50 calls, short-term expiration, both weeklies and for next week. Uh, even a name like Avago, Vago Broadcom, right? You know, look at, look at this. You know, again, stock trades a, a lot thinner than the rest of these chips. But boy, oh boy, look at this chart here. This thing starts getting above uh, the top of the range here from the March 6 highs, and this thing's going to start expand again. So the Bulls, again, they took the punch, they took the kidney blow, they gave, you know, they took the uppercut and everything in between, and, you know, they closed pretty much at the highs, and it's a really good, strong testament how strong the market, how strong and resilient the Bulls really are, but more important, it really does show you how the most toxic headlines right now are being bought. Again, does that change in the near future? Uh, again, you, you're going to see a lot of people talking about, well, it's the Fed, the Fed, the Fed. Let's see what the Fed has. Listen, we, we can't control what the Fed's going to say, right? Uh, we don't know. We you know the, Now that the Fed is talking potential, no uh, no hike. Again, it's understandable. Uh, again, I, I, I don't believe there will be a, um, there won't be uh, a rate cut. Anything's possible. Again, if I knew, I would act that way, but uh, I do believe the market is, is there is an, a, an equilibrium, a balance of kind of, you know, taking down, uh, curbing in inflation, but at the same time, not hurting, uh, hurting the bank. So I think, I, I think a realistic point of view and a realistic hot take for uh, the FOMC probably will be this time around, Fed will uh, probably, right, we don't know, uh, leave rates unchanged. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, for today, you know, just because a lot of stocks were getting pulled into their five day, there wasn't a lot of setups. There was, you know, a couple of setups here and there, uh, ultimately a pretty quiet day. Uh, but the good news is stocks did close towards the top of the channel. So we should get a lot better value for tomorrow's session, uh, than we did in today. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about, uh, some of the pivots, uh, today, as you can imagine, again, not a lot of things, uh, confirmed today. You got Tesla, uh, 176 held twice. If it builds below, it can flush. It traded right down to 176.29, never confirmed. This was the cleanest move of the day. Uh, as we talked about it over the weekend, huge run up last week. NVIDIA inverted hammer on the close, uh, 256.68. If it builds below, it can flush. NVIDIA had a nice move, uh, 258.68 traded all the way down here, uh, to the 251.30s. Nice $5 move on NVIDIA. Um, TTD didn't confirm. Um, COF didn't confirm, but I still like it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Fighting allergies here the whole weekend. Um, 89.40 held three twice. If it builds below, can flush. It's still holding on, guys. Keep an eye on this thing for the next couple of days on COF. Look how tight this thing is getting to the bottom channel here. It still hasn't confirmed this uh, 89's level, but if it does, this thing has a chance to uh, go lower. Uh, one to watch. Uh, then we were watching... Uh, NTRS, it didn't confirm. Uh, Tesla, again, held, got rejected once again off that level. And Apple, you know, Apple, again, the highest close in this whole formation, 157 to 157.40 needs to build. And Apple closed right on its breakout price from February the 3rd. If this thing confirms tomorrow and starts taking down, you know, taking down this, you know, 157.80s, uh, 158 level, there's a shot. It gets its next leg up. So keep an eye on that. And a little stock, right? You don't see usually a lot of little stocks uh, come out of this forum. But again, when there's option flow and there is a daily chart, usually good things are going to happen. You know? So here's a little silver stock, uh, SVM. A buyer came in for 1,000 of the April $5 calls. Needs to confirm 334. And here is 
SVM, right? It took out the two, it took out the two, a uh, 334 and closed pretty much at the high of the day at 349. Nice looking chart here. Again, again they came for the $5 calls uh, with less than a month left of it, uh, expiration. So again, it's one, uh, one to watch out. So that's it. That's it. Uh, going into tomorrow, uh, again, the levels that we definitely want to watch, uh, obviously to the upside, uh, 30 to the upside. Uh, the bottom channel today is 302. So 30630 is to the upside, 302 to the downside. And obviously last week's high above 309, we definitely want to pay attention to. Uh, the SPYs, again, a little bit, a little bit different scenario. We're, we're clustered. We're clustered in the middle of this whole channel here. Not a lot of room. So it's probably better to avoid the SPY names, the S&P 500 names, until they clear out supply above 296, uh, 396, 397. But until that happens, you're going to run into a big ping pong match, especially a day uh, ahead of the FOMC meeting and the IWM, the Russell. Uh, again, not a great chart compared to the Qs. Uh, you, you know, it's a little bit stagnant here. You still want to pay attention to this 170 level uh, that it held several times. Obviously, keep an eye on today's low as a barometer to see if it could start building below uh, today's low as well. So that's it, guys. That's it. Some days. You get very, very aggressive action. Some days you get very, very passive action. But I use days like this to kind of try to get as, you know, whatever cash flow you can. Again, because it wasn't a lot of big moves. A lot of really wasn't a lot of range uh, expansion. Uh, and in days that the ranges are contracting, you want to make sure you're gathering data. You see what's showing. For example, again, Apple, highest close in the whole formation, right? Leader of, you know, the highest. Uh, weighted stock in the NASDAQ 100. I believe it's the highest weighted. It could be Microsoft, but they're definitely 1A one, one and 1B. Um, you know, this is strong with, you know, short-term expiration, option flow. A lot of the other semiconductors are waking as well. So the groups are setting up here. The only question is, do they confirm tomorrow? And again, as we say all the time, to be determined. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.